Inside the cage, the bird knows its life is not at risk. The bars and the closed doors guarantee its full protection. Remaining inside the cage is safe, whereas leaving the cage represents risks. Like birds, we humans are fragile and need protection. You are probably wondering what this bird cage has to do with identity. Well, that is what I would like to talk about today. For my entire life, I have been trying to expand the boundaries of my identity. I have learned that we cannot eliminate or replace our primary identity because when we are born, we don't choose our gender, our language, our religion, our country. Therefore, our primary identity is like this cage. Today, I would like to share my own story with you and talk about four ways to expand your identity. The first way to expand your identity is to rethink the relationship between identity and diversity in an original way. In general, when it comes to the meaning of identity, there is a tendency to consider identity in opposition to diversity. However, I believe that diversity is not the opposite of identity, but its complement. Here are some examples. I can say I am a man because in addition to me, there are women and other genders. If there were only men in the world, it would make no sense to say I am a man. I can say I am Muslim because around me there are Jews, Catholics, Buddhists, and others. If there were only Muslims in the world, it would make no sense to say I am a Muslim. I can say I am a writer because there exist people with different professional identities, such as doctors, taxi drivers, uh, teachers, and, and others. If there were only writers in the world, it would make no sense to say I am a writer. So there is no identity without diversity, and there is no life without diversity. I learned as an, at an early age that diversity is a fundamental part of life. Living among five sisters and three brothers, I learned to accept and appreciate diversity. Although all we all had the same mother and same father, the same education, we lived in the same house, I can see there are many differences among us. Physically, some of us are white and others darker. Psychologically, some introverted, others extroverted. Politically, some in the right wing and others on the left. Now, I have a question for you. How many of you left home this morning without looking in the mirror? My guess, no one. This is because you can only see your face in reflection, right? So diversity is a mirror. Diversity is complementary to identity. The second way to expand your identity is through migration. A few years ago, in reading book in Rome, an Italian woman stood up. She was clearly upset and pointed to the cover of my book saying, why did your publisher use the word migrant three times to describe you? It's offensive. You write in Italian. You are an Italian writer. So I answered calmly, I am not offended at all. On the contrary, I am very proud to be a migrant. Later, I reflected on what that woman said. I realized that migration is very often connected to something negative. Instead, I believe that migration is a very positive experience. Migrants are dreamers, very courageous people. They challenge their destiny and seek to improve their lives. My life has been profoundly shaped by migration. I am convinced that 
EV migration is a birth, an EV birth and migration. My first birth took place in Algeria in 1970, when I migrated from my mother's belly into the world. I was troubled from the very start. Instead of coming out head first, like my five sisters and three brothers, I decided to emerge feet first. So that the, the, the risk of death was real for both my mother and, and me. To this day, my mother can recall the terrible pain. What did I do that? Probably I wanted to, walk, to start off walking. That, so that I was ready to move on and discover the world. When I, le when I escaped Algeria in 1995, I was born a second time in Italy, where I lived for 18 years, first as a political refugee, then as an immigrant. In 2008, I became an Italian citizen. In 2014, I moved to New York City, my third migration my third birth. Six years ago, my wife and I moved to Harlem. Living there has been akin to living in several countries at the same time. You are surrounded by multitude of different people and languages. You change streets or neighborhoods. You find, you find yourself in a new country of Spanish, Arabic, Hindi, Wolof, or Chinese-speaking individuals. I'm often taken for Latino and spoken into Spanish. I am sorry to disappoint, but recently I decided to learn Spanish to communicate with my neighbors, to, uh, to embrace di diversity. Migration is movement from protection and comfort to instability. Migration is a very powerful way to expand your identity and challenge yourself. When we migrate, we become a part of minority in terms of citizenship, language, and religion. While this minority status can be challenging, it's also a great opportunity to grow, to change, and to, to adapt. In all the countries I have lived in, I have always been part of the minority. Through this experience, I learned that when you belong to a minority, you have to be active and creative. You, have, you need to make twice the effort to know yourself and others deeply. The third way to expand your identity is to master languages. My mother tongue is Kabil, or Thamazir an indigenous language in, uh, of North Africa. It was the first language I spoke. Since it is customary in Algeria to call one's aunt mother, I consider Arabic my second mother tongue, French my third, Italian my fourth, English my fifth, and soon Spanish will be my sixth. As Rumi, the great poet, the great Persian poet said, speak new language so that the world will be a new world. It's, it's simply incorrect to relate language to nationality or uh, country or race. During the agricultural revolution in Algeria in the 1960s, the slogan we heard everywhere was, the land belongs to those who care for it. In the same way, languages belong to those who learn use, and create with them and from them. As an Algerian, I don't consider the French language be part of the legacy of French, of the, of French colonialism. The reason being language is civilization, and colonialism is never civilization. On the contrary, colonialism is destruction. Therefore, the French language does not belong solely to French citizens. It also belongs to me. Languages don't recognize borders. To visit a foreign country, we are required to fulfill entry requirements, right? Anyone, however, can enter a language and reside in one it. 
without asking permission. There is more freedom in language, unlike religion and nationality. You can't be both Jew and Muslim, Catholic and uh, Buddhist. As, as far as citizenship is concerned, I am lucky to have three nationalities, Algerian, Italian, and American. In language, there is freedom. You can speak as many languages as you want, and even more than one at a time. Every language you master will be yours and will, and will expand your identity and world vision. The fourth way to expand your identity is storytelling. When I was growing up in Algeria, we were poor. We got our first television at home when I was 13, which meant I spent my, most of my childhood without cartoons, movies, or TV shows. I kept, I kept this secret from my friends, and I started listening closely to their stories about TV programs that they watched. Then I will retell tell the, those stories. Sometimes I would add some details and run the risk to, uh, of being uh, cut inventing. In this way, I discovered the power of storytelling and imagination. So I could invent new stories for, for myself and I could share them with others. When I became a writer, journalist, uh, interpreter, and social worker, I discovered the value of empathy. I also learned how to go beyond my limited identity and discover other identities. In my novel, Clash of Civilizations, over in Levator in Piazza Vittorio, which I wrote in Arabic and Italian, I insert myself within 12 characters, as as the old Neapolitan concierge, a snobby university professor from Milan, an Iranian refugee, and others. In some of my novels, I put myself in the shoes of unlikable characters, and I made uh, interesting discoveries. So through storytelling, you can move from your identity to, to another. My five old daughter, Samira, loves birds, and she made this bird at school. It's a cardinal out of wood that I, I am using to explain the birdcage metaphor. In comparison to birds in cages, we humans have more, core, more freedom and knowledge to cross boundaries and open doors. To do so, we, have, we need to possess the courage to take more risks and, more, and achieve more balance between security and freedom, between protection and instability, between living in cage or flying off to get some fresh air and discover the world. So if, if you want to expand your identity, remember the four ways. Embrace diversity as part of your identity. Embrace migration. Embrace new languages. And practice the art of storytelling. Thank you.